What's up y'all welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is ariana but you can call me ari and today i'm going to give you a short list of unpopular black classics that i have on my tbr list i haven't uh i don't own these i haven't picked any of these up yet but i will insert a little picture over here of them as they pop up and i think these are all like seemingly really great books that we should all implement because we know the the famous ones we know the staples the pioneers but let's introduce some that we may not know so if you have read any of these books let me know what you thought of them in the comments let me know if you intend to pick any of these up so the first story is a book called far from the tree by virginia deberry and donna grant and this is a story of two sisters named Celeste and Ronnie who are so different from each other, uh, so seemingly different from each other. Celeste is a doctor's wife. She lives an elegant, extravagant life and, you know, really has all the things that she could ever want. Um, however, under the surface, she is dealing with a rocky marriage and she is on the brink of losing her marriage and she has this desire for a sense of control a sense of stability and she struggles greatly with expressing her vernal her and she struggles greatly with expressing her vulnerabilities and so that's our girl celeste and then we have ronnie ronnie is a actress living in new york city seemingly she has it all she's figuring it out she's getting the gigs but in actuality she's barely got a penny to her name a house to her name she's scraping by um doesn't really have a home is floating from one place to another and is actually not as put together as it seems so one day their father passes away and leaves this house in the city of proper North Carolina in their name. And so the girls are to venture out to North Carolina and see what this house is about, see what their father has left. However, their mother Della is like, I don't want y'all going there, just leave the past in the past because there are things that Della, their mother, is also hiding within herself and wants to keep these secrets that she has under the surface. So it's a story of like how true is it that your past stays the past can you really separate who you are now from the person you were then and also it's a story of i believe it'll be a story of healing of reconciling with the fact that all three of these women share a loss share so many similarities and share love and so this trip is i think going to open up some avenues for conversation and vulnerability that these women otherwise would not have explored had this not had happened. So yeah, I also, I think from my research, I don't know how it ends, but I did read that it does have a happy, hopeful ending. So love that. <laughs> love when we get a nice nice happy ending sometimes because i feel like i read a lot of books that don't always offer a happy ending because life doesn't always end that way so i'm glad that this one seems like it may lean to a reconciliation hopeful kind of ending so that is far from the tree okay so the next story we have is called tempest rising by diane mckinney waitstone and this is a story of three sisters who are living the black upper middle class life of i believe the 60s in west philadelphia so they are navigating their youth their adolescence coming of age everything seems okay until their father's business collapses and they start to lose everything not only does that happen but then their father disappears not only does he disappear but then he is presumed dead 
and that sends their mother into a mental breakdown which then sends the girls into the foster care system and they go to live with this woman named May in a working class family, a working class neighborhood. So their lifestyle is stripped from them and they are now living with this new family. And May has a 20 something, early 20 something year old daughter who she is horrible to, very abusive and just downright horrible to this young girl. And though, however, she is very kind and affectionate with the three new foster girls. So this older girl, Ramon, May's daughter, um, has her own kind of issues to work out. She is grappling with her despise and hatred for these three young girls who have infiltrated her home and uh, she also has some romance going on, some like craziness with her boyfriend's father. She has a sincerely deep attraction to her boyfriend's father. And that's what we know. So there is a lot of drama and so far, I mean, it's only two books, but I think there are others. There's one other book that just features like women and dealing with their own ish and like coming to terms with a lot of their own personal grievances and healing. So these two books are gonna be a lot about healing, a lot about growing up and just dealing with a lot of unresolved issues in their lives. So that's Tempest Rising. <laughs> Y'all have probably heard of this one, but it seems pretty hilarious. This is called Black No More by George Schuler. This is a story about a black man named Matt Disher, who is a dapper black rogue of insurance in the insurance world. And he decides to scientifically transform into a white man with the premise of being like, would life be happier if I was a white person? What would life be like if I were a white man? And so he does this and becomes this white man named Matthew Fisher. So he goes from Matt Disher to Matthew Fisher and he joins a white supremacist group and he um, ends up, I think, dating this white woman that he wasn't able to date when he was black, that had rejected him when he was black and is now dating him now that he's white. And it's just this social commentary, hysterical, satirical commentary on racism and that's all I know. I'm interested in seeing how the humor comes about because when we're talking historical fiction, like historical humor can be very, um, sometimes can be difficult to unravel because what was funny back then is not funny anymore. And the way they tell their jokes is a bit more roundabout than we tell our jokes today. So I'm wondering if I'll find this as funny as other people say it is, but just go into it knowing that it's, it's satire it's just commentary and <laughs> I'm, I'm here for it. I'm interested in seeing where this goes for sure. All right, so this last book is called I Tichiba Black Witch of Salem by Maurice Conde. And this is a story of Tichiba, just a little bit of a historical reference. This is a real person. She was a enslaved Native American woman um, who was one of the first to be accused of witch witchery, witchcraft uh, during the Salem witch trials. So that's pretty much all you need to know going into this. You don't even need to know that, but just, just to have some context, um, that's who this woman is. And so the story goes like this. So we first follow her um, as she witnesses the hanging of her mother. Um, her mother was hanged because she was trying to protect Tichuba from her white enslaver who tried to rape Tichuba. 
And so through that or after that, Tituba decides to flee and she flees the plantation and she comes in contact with a woman named Mama Yaya and starts to live with Mama Yaya. Mama Yaya is a spiritual healer and a spiritual herbalist. And so Tichiba starts to learn the trade of spiritual herbalism and starts to learn the practice. And so um, eventually she ends up falling in love with a man, uh, with a man named John Indian. And John Indian is an enslaved man who convinces her to come back to said plantation and rejoin slavery again. And love makes us do crazy things. She does it, she goes back, and of course life is horrible and they are both sold into slavery and she is sent to trial and is sentenced to um some time some jail time where she is pregnant with child and eventually i think from here or not even from here we just continue to follow her story the the life of this of this woman named Tichiba. Um, and so we go through the trials and all that kind of stuff with her. And then we have, um, we just wrap up her life. And the way I understand how this book goes, it ends in a more spiritual lens. If that makes sense, it's a more spiritual ending than it is a super physical one. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of spirituality, of course, but um, some metaphors and some symbolism and just all the wonderful things that I think uh, Black historical, classical fiction and still present day fiction like Jasmine Ward um, utilize in their writing to describe the turmoil, the pain, the strife, the stress of Black people and people of color during these types of times. Those are all of the books that I have on my TBR that I think are pretty unpopular or at least I haven't seen people really talk about them. Yeah, let me know if you have read any of these books and if you enjoyed any of these books um, or if you're interested in any of them. I hope y'all are having a wonderful Sunday. I have had quite the laid back weekend. I, um, you know, started a new job. And so the first weekend, I'm just kind of giving myself time to recharge and reset. I almost did not make this post today because it's gonna go up, as you'll see, <laughs> it's going up later than I had originally anticipated it to go up because honestly, I was gonna be like, you know what, let me just cancel today's video because Clearly, I'm just generally feeling a little like laid back than I, um, I guess I anticipated, but I, I got some energy, I got some time and I'm really passionate about talking about books. So I couldn't, I couldn't just say no to y'all. So yeah, here we are. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. If you're got the day off for MLK Day. I hope you do whatever it is you feel that uh, will feed your soul and your energy and take some time for yourself. Take some time to reflect on what this time actually means. I hope you're having a great start to your new year and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye!